the Bronx Bull, the Raging Bull. Let's hear for the great Jake LaMotta, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, my name is Bruce Isaacs. I'm an academic working in film studies at the University of Sydney. Over the next week, I'm going to be looking at five iconic sequences in the cinema of Martin Scorsese, one each day. This sequence comes from Scorsese's Raging Bull of 1980. Uh, this is the film that really established Scorsese as the preeminent filmmaker because Raging Bull was at once a great experimental film. Uh, he returned to black and white, for example, which is really considered something rebellious. Uh, even today, if you think of the filmmakers, you know, think of the Coen brothers doing black and white, for example. It seems to be something rebellious um, within the context of a mainstream form of cinema. As audiences, we find black and white as the signature of art house. It's the signature of alternative kinds of cinema. So Scorsese it turns to black and white to provide this sense of an alternative space of cinema. But I think in much more profound ways, he's calling on the tradition of Italian neorealism. And this is a sequence that I absolutely adore in his work. I don't have so much to say about it in terms of expressive style, or in terms of the wild experimentation we've seen in the sequences in Mean Streets or Taxi Driver. What I want you to get a sense of now is the poise in Scorsese. Have a look at the ways in a play what is a highly dramatic scene covered in dialogue, but that works as an insight into the twisted persona of Jake LaMotta, played by Robert De Niro. I want to talk a little bit about De Niro's performance, and I want to talk about the space that surrounds the performance, again in the domestic setting. We're again amongst the street, the street figures. So it's LaMotta, it's his brother. It's the kind of community that we're going to see come back as... I suppose street and gangster uh, communities in Goodfellas and Casino. Yeah, I want you to look at the way that De Niro's performance captures the foundations of the development of this persona. Uh, there are a number of lines that I want to draw your attention to and a number of expressive gestures in De Niro's performance. Okay, so the paranoia of this male subject uh, in Scorsese, most males are deeply paranoid about one thing or another. Is it done? No, it's not done. I always think that that Scorsese is you're thinking of a streetcar named Desire. I think he's thinking about Brando. Um, I, I certainly think he's thinking about uh, the Ilya Kazan uh, version of Streetcar with Brando because I know that it's a, a film that Scorsese greatly admired. If you think about the comparisons here between Jake LaMotta and Stanley Kowalski, He's framing De Niro as eating, right? This is an animalistic figure. So he's a male, but he's, I suppose it's not uncharitable to say he's uneducated. He lives through his body. Uh, he's, he's a sort of physical specimen of the streets. So he's learned to live through the streets and in the streets. And his mobility comes not from education, but from the physicality of his, his boxing. He's actually fighting a boxing match regardless of the space. Whether he's in the ring, whether he's in the domestic space of the setting that you're about to watch, uh, he seems constantly involved in subduing his opponent uh, with his own physicality. And that's going to be a theme that runs um, in many ways throughout Scorsese's work, this, uh, this aggressive, repressed American male figure that, uh, that ultimately is going to be uh, self-destructive. Again, we could be watching a near-realist sequence, an apartment setting. Uh, I, I suspect they shot this on set, but it looks to be, you know, a kind of tenement building that you, that, that, that you would be familiar with. Bring it over. Bring it over. Bring it over. The repetition of bring it over seems to me so naturalistic. I wonder how much of this is improvised. How much is it part of De Niro's performance method? I can't wait. Good. Okay. And now we get this unleashing of this, this animal. That's here. Not more. There. You're buying me by a steak? Huh? You're buying me by a steak? Yeah. I agree with you. We cut to the street culture. I'm going to go move. I'll talk to him. What the 
the fuck do you want me to do? But this joy, Tommy. It's organized crime. It's young men who have grown up in this world of organized crime who are each in their own way repressed. And ultimately that leads to a kind of spilling over of rage, which we see in this film, Three Jack Lamotta. See you tomorrow. Let me go. All right. Where are you going to be? I'll be at the gym or the other joint. I'll catch you by the gym. All right. We enter the scene on the arguments. Notice here that the, the, we come into the apartment. I want to hear. I'm clean. And the argument is in process. You can imagine how difficult it would be to capture this. It's why filmmakers talk about performance being so central to cinema. How do you capture the, the sort of constant energy of the performance? A rhythm that never seems to fluctuate. It builds in intensity. Hey, you! Come on, Jack. I'm gonna get over that dog and I'm gonna eat it for lunch. You hear what I'm saying? You hear me, Larry? We get Lamotta that uh, actually identified as an animal, and it's gonna be an overarching theme in Raging Bull. Son of a bitch! You're gonna find your dog dead in the hallway tomorrow, you and fittingly we close on the separation of the man and the woman I think this is not only going to be a separation that's critical to Scorsese's uh, work um, think about for example Henry Hill and his separation um, from uh, Lorraine Bracco's character in Goodfellas this gradual separation this, this pulling apart of what once was a traditional marriage or traditional um, relationship that was sanctioned by God uh, by family etc it's fitting that we close the sequence in Raging Bull with the separation from the wife because ultimately this is an American masculine world um, the brothers are in fact the foundation of the community um, their dialogue exchange is far more important and far more impacting than any exchange between Lamar and his wife. Uh, and it's a theme that I think is going to be so central to uh, some of the great examples of, of American cinema. Think about that wonderful closing shot of uh, the first Godfather film, Coppola's movie. Uh, if you recall that, it's Michael becoming the Godfather, Al Pacino. And if you remember, we get a cut, and it's to a fairly intimate shot of Kay, uh, played by Diane Keaton. And it's at that point that Michael is assuming the power of the patriarch. And as we see here, it's a door closing off the woman from the man. And even though this sequence in Rage and Bull, I think intriguingly shows us the wife as aware of her own marginalization, and she fights back against the model, which is no mean feat, right, with the physicality of the nearest performance. But ultimately, she's going to be bracketed off. She's going to be bracketed off in this world by Scorsese's camera. And this is going to be a world that is actually shot from the point of view of men. Uh, an overarching theme in Scorsese's work. Uh, you're going to get, of course, films that explore female characters in, in extremely sensitive ways. But Scorsese is not doing this to be a patriarchal filmmaker. I think he's doing it to explore the corrosiveness of this patriarchal world that is ultimately going to lead to the destruction of so many of these uh, um, male figures. I swear to God, I'm gonna come in there and I'm gonna kill you. Yeah, sure. <laughs>